Hi, I'm Tammy, and today I'm going to talk to you about Jim Beam Distillery. And it is uh, located in Claremont, Kentucky. And I just wanted to welcome you to All Things Bourbon and ask you to like and subscribe uh, if you find anything that you like that Joel and I make on All Things Bourbon when we're talking about bourbon and trips and different things that we like to do with bourbon and hunting for it. So the beams were... Um, they are known all over the world. They actually have, I think, the top selling bourbon, amount of bourbon, and are famous all around the world. But they came to the United States, and they started making bourbon with Jacob Beam in 1795. And he was a German immigrant, and he had learned to make whiskey. And then he came here, and we had an excess amount of corn when his family moved to Kentucky. And so the bur the Beam say that they created um, bourbon. So Jacob Beam was the father of all the beams. But when you start looking into the beams, they had a lot of kids, lots of kids, lots of descendants. So you have in Kentucky, you have beams that are sprinkled throughout Kentucky and in the business of all distill distilleries. It's kind of like just finding a new little clue of like uh, David, I think his name is David uh, Beam. He has reopened or started his own Yellowstone and this little um, craft bourbon place. And he has a minor case, um, which is one of the family members. So just uh, their talent ha is not just in the Jim Beam distillery or just in the Beam family, but the beams are are sprinkled through all, all of the, the business. So when Jim Beam moved here, um, he brought his family and they ended up in Claremont, Kentucky. So when you go to Claremont, Kentucky, I'm going to talk mostly today about the distillery and the tour because that's kind of where everything started for me as knowing anything about Jim Beam. So when we went um, in November of 2021 and again in March of 22, but in November um, they had started, they had reopened and they had this new facility and you come up on the grounds and as usual, the country distilleries just really, I love them that I just love Kentucky and I love getting out to the ones that are, have a lot of little history in their little country, but they, uh, they have a um, cemetery out there, a post office, a church, and they have, um, it's like, there's a little town and there was a quarry, rock quarry there that I think some of the family members had worked at. I don't believe it's active anymore. And then you have the distillery and uh, the James Beam distillery is the hardest working distillery that there is. So when you come up on the ground and you see this basically little bitty town that was and know that that's where um, the Beam family started everything out and to see that from 1795 till now, all that they have done and that they're known internationally is very impressive from humble beginnings to just what to do with excess corn to a, a huge business that they kept surviving through prohibition and have handed down from generations the craft that they've learned. So when we arrived, we went into the gift shop and they had the sharpest building is just um, this really cool building and they had um, statues outside honoring different members of the family and they had cool music playing and they have a place where they um, you can go and eat and they have a bar and then they have the tour so when we went into the gift shop we had already signed up for the tour and we took it and they have this giant people mover and you um, like huge uh, people mover and it's very impressive to me the person that drives it because they have this one area if you go on the tour you'll see but it's it's kind of tight to get into and it's not it's a lot of people uh, there and they have to move around and uh, so that's just a whole other thing but anyway the grounds um, are not they're kind of just all together but they they don't make you walk so um, you're just you get in and you go look um, at one of the rick houses and they have uh, just they talk to you about the the bourbons that have been made there and a little bit about their history and then they take you over and they actually take you into the distillery and they show you how they um, made everything so they have this cool car and they have waterfall and they because they're showing you this noisy waterfall that shows you the limestone water that they use and they have the car that 
one of them drove and it's a really cool car and how they would take the yeast home with them. And then they have the corn and they have the mash bill of what they make and tell you how they make it. And uh, you can actually see into where their stuff is uh, fermenting. And then you go over to another area and you, you can see where they, it's very loud, like a refinery, but the distillery, um, and it's, uh, where, where, and it's very noisy where the white dog comes in and how they make all that. So then they had added on our March tour, they had finished where you could go and you could taste a little bit of a barrel and they'd show you how they, they did some stuff with the barrel, but they also had the entire process set up and you could uh, pick to bottle your own bottle, but it wasn't like, um, you picked the bottle and they showed you how it ran through a bottling and then you got to put your thumbprint on it and you got to take pictures and that was a lot of fun. But the whole processing was on the wall. So if you didn't get it or hear it during the tour, or you didn't grasp it, they were really into letting you know how they made things and how, um, you know, bourbon comes to be. So with Jim Beam, um, there were our eight generations from Jacob Beam down to the new master distiller. He was just made the master distiller, um, Freddie No, in um, May of this year. And so eight generations, and that's not counting, like I said, all those other relatives. So the uh, fact that it was Fred and his son, Freddie, and they would make things like this Booker's and this little book. And then they also had the father or grandfather and his name was Booker. And so those the changed from six, five generations of Beam last names to knows which were married the daughters of beams and so for the last three generations they are descendants uh basically in the beam family but not true born beam children but they have held on to making uh, the business grow and take over and continue that uh, they also have been, unfortunately, um, taken over somewhere like in the 2000s, I think, by a Japanese company, Santori. But as true as American product it is, um, we still have the American distillers that are born and, you know, raised there and know all the craft doing all of these products. So that um, on that tour, when we came in, they had all of the history telling you about the different beams on the TVs. They had a real cool setup where you could lounge while you were waiting. The gift shop was really nice. And then they had like on the wall, these photographs of like how, when you see, if you've ever seen Harry Potter movies that um, they kind of changed and they showed pictures throughout history of different family members. So that was a very um, honoring, I thought, and very eye opening. So you got the process, you got the history. So however much you want to look at, however much you want to read, it's kind of definitely honoring all the people that have made Jim Beam. Um, and so this is just a very few of the products that are there. And uh, the little book comes out once a year. I can't remember what year it started. And the bookers, there's four of these a year that they release. And these have their own really cool story. And then there's the Knob Creek and the Jim Beam and the Basil Hayden, and the Bakers. And even in one of the things I was reading, Basil Hayden, like, um, was a neighbor to the Beams. So there's a lot of history as you, it unfolds. And there's a lot more to tell today than just about the tour. But the tour is just a very informative. If you have any interest in bourbon, then you go there and you're going to get a really good view of how everything makes is made. And so one of the things I will go into of the descendants. Um, so Booker was the one that really started small batch. So Jacob Beam started bourbon in the U S they claim. And uh, Fred Booker, no, um, he started messing around and people really liked what he was doing. And he started small batches, which every bourbon company has a small batch that they, it's just a bunch of barrels that they blend together. So you don't have 10 different tastes. You take those 10 and you, and you make them the same way and you blend them together so that you have one consistent uh, taste. So they, he created that. And then um, the 
um, one of the descendants, uh, David Beam, I don't know if it was the second or third generation of makers, but he is the one that um, went from pot stills to column stills. So there are two different types of stills, and some bourbon places, distilleries like to use the pot stills, some like to use the column stills. I think some of them use both, but I may not be correct on that. But I thought that was fascinating that he came up with a new, um, a new way to make stuff. So anyway, those two things are big deals um, that they created in their family line and added to the bourbon, um, the bourbon world. So um, the beams, they uh, have all these products here. I have this Basil Hayden open, and it is the toasted one. And it has a nice smell, and it is a great product. I want to do in future, I just wanted to introduce you to tell you to go to the distillery, check out the distillery. It's a great time. Taste all the different products. They're tasting. Oh, you go up to their tasting, and they let you, they have larceny. I think it's, is it larceny? I can't remember which one Centauri made with them. Maybe it's another L. But anyway, they have um, a tasting where you can taste the Knob Creek and the Basil Hayden and the Bakers and uh, the Jim Beam, of course. And then they have all their flavored. So if you want to um, go and have a good time and see where a lot of the bourbon stuff got started and then how it is sprinkled into all these different products and all the different distilleries, check it out. And thank you and like and subscribe and have a great day. Cheers. Yummy.